these are the types of licenses that people need out there who are driving trucks and large vehicles need to secure in order to operate those vehicles safely. The indictment alleges these defendants gave passing scores to people who did not pass the test to obtain a CDL. In return for passing unqualified applicants, one of the defendants, Sergeant Gary Cedarquist, is alleged to have received personal benefits of a variety, a variety of nature. A new driveway valued at over $10,000, a $2,000 snowblower, and other such items. The grand jury indictment against these six men includes charges of extortion, honest services mail fraud, conspiracy, false statements, and falsification of records. In short, as alleged in this indictment, the CDLs were for sale and troopers were bribed with free goods to pass applicants no matter how they performed on the test. Four of these defendants were arrested this morning, including two members of the Massachusetts State Police, Sergeant Gary Cedarquist and Trooper Joel Rogers. Two civilians were also arrested this morning, Scott Camara and Eric Matheson. Two retired Massachusetts, Massachusetts State Troopers were arrested in Florida yesterday, Calvin Butner and Perry Menendez. So let me just pro provide a little bit more background about these criminal charges. The issuance of CDLs is governed by federal law and regulations. These laws require that in order to secure a CDL, an operator must pass certain tests, um, three, three tests specifically, a vehicle inspection, a basic skills test, and a road test. You need to pass these tests in order to operate large vehicles on highways and in our neighborhoods, things like tractor trailers, oil tankers, and school buses. These standards and regulations exist for one very simple reason, to protect and prevent death and injuries from the operation of commercial motor vehicles. It's to make sure that everyone operating these, these types of rigs at high rates of speed on highways or in neighborhoods has the required skill to operate them safely. And under federal law, these CDL tests are administered at the state level. And here in Massachusetts, that uh, responsibility is vested with the state police in a particular unit known as the Commercial Drivers Licensing Unit. The indictment alleges that starting in August 2018, three of the Massachusetts State Police officers working in that unit used their positions to falsify results on the basic skills test for certain CDL applicants. The indictment alleged that a fourth trooper, Trooper Joel Rogers, joined that conspiracy in, in uh, 2022. The civilians who were charged either provided free goods or conspired with the troopers to pass applicants who, who, who didn't actually pass the test. These defendants all conspired to pass applicants who either failed the test, did not take the test, or took an abbreviated test. As set forth in the indictment, the defendants allegedly displayed no regard for the public safety consequences of allowing people who didn't pass the test to have a CDL and operate commercial trucks. As you will see in the indictment, there are various text messages included. They jokingly talk about golden treatments and golden handshakes, referring to giving guaranteed passes to certain CDL applicants, regardless of how they did on the test. In one text, defendant Butner a Massachusetts State Trooper, allegedly talks about an applicant who is performing required maneuvers, and he described him as, quote, a mess, end quote. And he said that the applicant owes defendant Cedarquist, quote, prime rib for passing the test. In another message about a CDL, CDL applicant that he passed, Sergeant Cedarquist allegedly texted defendant Matheson, commenting, quote, this kid is an idiot, and, quote, no idea what he is doing, end quote. Now, I want to reassure the public that our office has been working with the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles and providing information where we come across people who are known to have obtained a CDL improperly. And that coordination has happened throughout this investigation. Now, I just want to say one last thing before I turn it over to our law enforcement partners. Um, the reality is that today is a sober reminder that, that none of us are above the law. It's always disheartening uh, to discuss allegations that a fellow member of law enforcement has violated his or her oath. Yet preserving the integrity of our legal system, including holding law enforcement <clears throat> accountable, is paramount. 
I know the members of law enforcement share this view. We partner closely with Massachusetts State Police regularly, and I've seen their great work and their tireless dedication in a number of cases. This case is about the specific individuals charged in this indictment and referenced in this indictment. It is not about the more than 2,000 men and women who serve in the Massachusetts State Police. It's our responsibility at the U.S. Attorney's Office to investigate allegations of public corruption, and we need to do that through an unbiased lens with no fear or favor. As evident by today, we will not shy away from this obligation. It's a commitment to that ideal, incredibly hard work by the agents at HSI, Department of Transportation, by the great work uh, of members of my team that resulted in these charges.